everybody, welcome to the summit. I see sunshine. Who's excited? There you go. Yeah, everybody excited about the sunshine. Hey, to all you guys watching online today, if uh, you do not know, you don't live around here, we got about a foot of snow last week, a week ago today, and uh, it shut everything down here, right? We got uh, kids out of school all week. We all have those kind of crazed look in our eyes a little bit. I think they're going back Monday, you guys. So I know, you can clap for that. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Um, but they got an extended Christmas break. I saw some people on social media hashtagging their kids um, little snowman pictures and stuff like that. Spring break 2019. That was very funny, whoever did that. That was hilarious. So guys, if you are new to the summit or you've been coming to the summit for a while, we have these awesome guest services team. You saw them out on the patio. They're incredible people. If you have questions about anything at all, Christmas services, what's going on, why we do what we do, that is what they are for out there. They can answer all your questions and they are good at it, you guys. So who, while we were on our extended uh, Christmas break, our spring break, whatever you want to call it last week, who binge watched some Christmas movies? Anybody? A few of you. Uh, hopefully you've been watching some Christmas movies out there a little bit because I have a little challenge for you. I want to do a Christmas movie quote challenge. See how good you guys are at this if you're brushed up on your Christmas movies, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you half of a movie quote, and I need you guys to fill in the other half, okay? You think you can do that? Yeah? All right, let's try it. I feel like this is a, a pretty easy one to start off with, okay? So check out the screen. Look, Daddy, teacher says every time a bell rings. <laughs> you got it right, and you sounded so excited about it. Good job. Well done. And play along with this online, too. I'd love to have you type that in chat. All right, here's our next one. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps. Yes, the Grinch. Aw, heart grew three sizes. That's awesome. All right, here's the next one. And so, and let me get my British accent on. As Tiny Tim said, a Merry Christmas to all and... <laughs> British accents are on point, you guys. Well done. I love it. Our southern British accents. Good job. All right, here's the next one. I want an official Red Rider Carbon Action 200 shot range model air rifle. No, you'll. Yeah, that's the favorite one right there. That's everybody's favorite. No, you'll shoot your eye out. Awesome. All right, here's our last one for today. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is... Good job, y'all. Well done with the Christmas movie quotes. That's exactly what we are going to do right now. We're going to sing loud for all to hear. So y'all stand up together. Let's sing with the band. Sing this with me. Hark the herald angels Glory to the newborn King, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled, joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies, with
this rolling, so right now, help me out, put your hands together. When I was searching, your love was never far. You made a way to get to me, you were the whisper, leading me to your heart. Forever I belong to you.
God does great things when people like you give. And 2018 has been one of the summit's greatest years yet. Here's just a highlight of some of the great things God is doing. We believe children and students are not just the church of the future, they're the church of today. And every week we serve hundreds of children and students and their families in the Peak Kids Summit and Impact. But this past summer, was the biggest ever with over 1,200 students and volunteers between Just Camp Kids Summit and Big Stuff Camp alone. 2,702 people signed up to serve in some capacity in our church and community. 1,242 people were engaged in a small group. 3,427 people took a next step in their journey with God. 955 first-time guests walked through the doors of one of our locations. There was an average of 1,383 unique logins of people watching and engaging with us through our online church and app every week. An average of over 43,000 people every week were reached and engaged with us through our social media outlets there were 557 first-time financial givers, and 463 people have automated their gifts to recurring giving. $21,472 was given to our grain initiative to feed hungry families in Burkina Faso, West Africa. $39,735 was given to hurricane relief in our state and $258,234 was given to local mission organizations. We even kicked off our initiative to build a permanent facility for our Oak Ridge location. And so far, over $1.4 million has been pledged from 510 donors. And most important of all, 100 people went public with proclaiming their trust in Jesus Christ as Savior and declared their desire to follow him through baptism. You see, God does his work through the gifts of people like you. So thank you for sharing the love of Jesus through giving. Your giving matters for now and for eternity. And I invite you to join us in finishing off 2018 strong by making a year-end gift. 
You can give easily and quickly through our website or app, and all 2018 gifts must be received by December 31st. So thank you for making 2018 great. And remember, God does great things when people like you give. Yeah. That is one good looking bold man on that video. <laughs> you know, something that's interesting um, about all those numbers, that's a lot of numbers, I get it. And it's like drinking from a fire hydrant. And it's supposed to be. Because God, God's doing amazing things. And what's interesting to me is that I, I, because I stand on this stage and because I'm recognizable, person with the church, people stop me in public a lot and they thank me for stuff that I'm not responsible for. And I'm very quick to, you know, be gracious, say thank you, you're welcome, you know, but I try to do my best to redirect to where the credit's due. Now, obviously, I try not to do the, you know, the Christian pastor thing, you know, to all Jesus every time, you know. Because that's the deal. Without him, none of this is possible. It's all glory to God. But specifically, God does amazing things through people like you. Like, for instance, um, about a week ago, just, as, just in the last week, about a week ago, a lady came up to me in the grocery store. And first of all, she was, you know, really shocked to, that I would be in a grocery store. And I'm like, I eat. <laughs> I do eat. Right, and so she went on and on and on and on and on, thanking me for impact and the 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 life changes brought about in her son. Her son is uh, about to go into high school, and just went on and on and on and on and on. It's just fantastic just to listen and to all the things that God is doing in his life. And I mean, his he's, his room is always clean now. He does all his homework. He's getting A's. No, I just made that last part up, but. But it's changing his life. Uh, yesterday, we were at a friend's, some friends, uh, we were with some friends doing a Christmas thing, and, and a lady came up to me and said, we just left, and she named the local elementary school not far from here, where you guys are serving, and you're doing something awesome for kids today, and my child was so encouraged and had so much fun. Thank you so much for what you do in the community. I'm like, well, I wasn't there. I, I, I'm not doing that personally, and all of those things are possible. A lady uh, just a couple of weeks ago met me out in the lobby and pointed to her husband across the way and said, you see that man over there? He's mine. And, and he hasn't been in church in 15 years, and this is the only church he'll go to. I don't do that. That's not me. That's because of God. And all of that happens when people like you give and participate. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Lives are being changed, young and old, for forever because you give. So thank you. And let's continue. Because we're not just giving to a church. We are investing into people who are eternal beings and have eternal souls. Everybody lives forever somewhere. And so we are making investments in eternity every time we give. I just want you to know it. I don't ever want you to forget it. Matter of fact, let's take just a second and let's thank God once more for what he's done in this past year. Father, we are aware that we can do nothing without you. It is only by your grace and your power that any of this is possible. But you use people, the gifts of people. So may we continue to give. And thank you for those that are giving. For those that are not, may they join in and imagine what we could accomplish if we all honored you and give and serve as you've called us to. And we ultimately know all glory is yours forever. We thank you in Jesus' name. to go see them again this year. Are we there yet? Why is my family so weird? Well, we can't come in and them. save on the hottest toys of 2018. How are we going to pay for that? Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, folks. Santa is very busy Venti, today. peppermint, mocha, non-fat, well, They're not staying in this house. Kids, settle 
down. That's not fair. Where'd you get the money for that? Get it now for 0% interest. 60 days, same as cash. Mom, I want that one. I haven't even started shopping. Your total will be $748.63. Mom! Is it the chip or the swipe? You know we can't afford what that. What do you mean it's Dad, been delayed? the turkey! Well, looks like we're ordering pizza. Nothing says you love her like a Tiffany diamond. You know, this necklace. could be the last She's Christmas. hitting me. Promise? Make her stop. That's it. <laughs> Everything is going back to the store. Dad, he's annoying me. Oh, you shouldn't no, have. Absolutely not. And that's what happens when the government hands out free money. Oh, here we go again. You do this every year. We'll talk about this after the holidays. Now that bending never been no good. Not that no win. What do you do? Sir, we don't. We don't. So we're gonna fit all this in in two weeks. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that still gets me so wound up, and I've heard it. For three weeks, I am looking forward to not hearing it anymore. <laughs> Man, my goodness. Hey, if you've missed any of the last three weeks in our White Knuckle Christmas series, let me give you a quick review. And by the way, you can always go to the website. You can always go to the app and catch all the things you missed there. But real quick, we've been talking about stress not how to eliminate stress. This was not a series on how to eliminate stress because stress is not eliminatable. I don't know if that's a word, but you get my, you get my point. I mean, it's normal, it's natural. So we were, we've been talking about how to respond to stress, how to deal with stress. Not how, you can't get rid of it, so how do we respond? We've been looking at the people in the Christmas story, specifically in week one, Mary, and how she responded to stress and how she leaned into her relationship with God specifically. Great habits there, great responses. Last week we looked at Joseph and how he recognized that stressful things often lead us to the best things. And so we have to just kind of gut up, take a deep breath, and walk right through the stress and choose the best kind of stress. Since we're going to have stress anyway, choose the best kind of stress that leads us to the best kind of desirable end in life. And so today we're going to wrap up this short series talking about the shepherds. And uh, I, I think we're going to learn a lot together. The thing I know about stress, and you know about stress, and, and all of us can identify with this, is that stress, especially um, really stressful stress, often comes on suddenly. You ever notice that? Like in an instant. Like you're not stressed, everything is fine, and then you get a phone call. Everything changes. Just one phone call. And you find yourself saying, oh, I wish I hadn't answered that. I mean, everything was fine. Or you get a text. You know, those are the worst, right? I mean, you're doing fine. You're in a meeting. You're in a conversation with somebody else. Or you're driving down the road. And your phone's sitting right there. And you see a text pop up. And the text, you can just tell, is not good news. And you're like, oh, oh, man. Or it's a conversation that you have. Or get this, this is interesting. Sometimes it's not even a conversation. Sometimes it's just one comment. Right? And you find yourself saying, oh, I could have done without that. I was fine until she said, I was fine until he said, I was fine until I heard, and we fill in the blank. Or maybe it's a tragedy or an accident. Either way, suddenly, in an instant, blood pressure goes up, heart rate soars, get a little short of breath, you are stressed to the max. And you find yourself saying, I don't know what I'm going to do. I just don't know how I'm going to, I just don't know how I'm going to handle this. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Maybe you're in a I don't know what to do moment right now and you feel overwhelmed because that's what stress does and you're wondering what's going to happen next and you start dealing with fear and worry and anxiety and you have no guaranteed outcome right you don't know how this is going to end so you're like i don't know what if this what if that what if this what if that i'm a big what ifer maybe you are too and then all the emotions that come with it and and doesn't stress bring strong emotions and sometimes the emotions are kind of like on the high side, and you're like really overreacting, or maybe the, the emotions you experience are on the low side, and you kind of turn in and cave in and kind of isolate yourself from everyone else. All the emotions. Interesting thing about emotions is they cloud our ability to think clearly, don't they? Emotions, even good ones, 
often cloud our ability to see clearly and to process things clearly and productively. You've got to be careful with emotions. Emotions can lead you down the wrong path if you're not careful. And that's what stress does. Uh, Craig Rochelle is pastor of Life Church in Oklahoma, and they have a lot of locations all over America, one of the largest churches in America. And he said this recently. I, I heard him say this, and I wrote it down. It was actually a couple months ago I wrote this down because I thought it was so good. He said, when your emotions are high, your wisdom is low. When your emotions are high, your wisdom is low. When emotions are high, your wisdom is low. Isn't that so true? So many times we get emotional and we say unwise things and we do unwise things and we make unwise choices that we regret. Yeah, that word. So you got to be careful with emotions. Experts and psychologists and psychiatrists and counselors and people who know all about stress and anxiety and all that, they, they say that, that we all typically respond pretty much in the same way, and it falls into like one of three different primary categories, our response to great amounts of sudden onset stress. And, and it's either freeze, fight, or flight. Maybe you've heard this. We can talk about this. Freeze, fight, flight. We, we freeze. In other words, we do nothing. Just a moment of in, you know, indecision. And maybe it's not a moment of indecision. Maybe it's a week or a month or a year <laughs> of indecision. We just don't know what to do. Or maybe it's fight for you. And you lash out. I mean, you, you lash out at things, and unfortunately, you lash out at people. When you get really stressed out, everybody knows it, and they run for cover. And see, some of you are trying to laugh that off, and you're like, well, that's just the way I am. That's the way God made me. Don't you blame God for your stupidity. He's not. You need to get some control. And then sometimes we, you know, we run. It's called Flight. We avoid, we abandon, we quit. We, we get the heck out of, you know, wherever situation we're in and we try to get as far away as we can from the person or the situation or the moment. Now, to be honest, each of us do all of these things. There's a bit of each of these in all of us, but we all default to one primary stress response. And if you don't know, and if you haven't developed the self-awareness enough to recognize which of these is your default setting, then ask your family if you dare. Ask your husband. Ask your wife. And then run. <laughs> right? Or you know, ask your kids, parents, they'll they'll tell you. Right? The the one that I, I seem to struggle with the most in times of heavy onset stress, and, and I think it's one that a lot of us deal with. So it's the one I want to come to to focus on, even though they're all important, they're all we could talk about, and God addresses all of these things in his word. And I think the one, though, that we come back to time and time again, and the one I, I team to have, seem to have a, a default setting to, is that we freeze. We freeze. We just freeze. We don't know what to do. And we don't want to do the wrong thing. So, so we're in a moment of indecision. But yet it's not just a moment. It turns into moments. Then you find yourself days. I don't know what to do. Weeks. I don't know what to do. Maybe a month or more. I don't know what to do. And this moment has turned into something bigger than a moment. The stress is so great. You just, I don't know how to respond. And maybe some of you have been there a long time. There's a better way to respond, and we're going to discover that better way, especially when you're frozen. We, we, I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And some of you, you know, there's all kinds of reasons why, and there's all kinds of things, but maybe that's your refrain right now. You're like, I don't know what to do about this. I don't know what to do about this, and maybe I can put it on hold till after the holidays, till after Christmas, but I know i got to make a decision, and I don't know what to do about this. I'm so stressed out because I don't know. I'm so stressed out because I don't understand. I'm so stressed out, and you fill in the blank. Well, we're going to look at the shepherds because I, I've discovered something 
a few months ago when I was looking at this and thinking about this series that I'm like, man, this is so simple and it's been there the whole time. And I think it can be really helpful for us. You know, the shepherds, you got to remember this. <laughs> they were stressed out. Man, they were so stressed out in this moment. And, you, and it's, quick, it's quick and easy to miss unless you really think like a normal shepherd. Because they were just normal people. See, here's the deal. The shepherds didn't know they were the shepherds. The shepherds did not know they were the shepherds. They were just normal guys doing their normal thing. They had no idea that they were about to be immortalized as little figurines in nativity sets for all eternity. <laughs> they had no idea. It's not like they were walking around going, guys, I think this is the night. I think this is the night. This, I just feel something. I feel something. This, we probably need to practice our nativity poses. Do I, should I hold the staff like this or like this? One knee, two knees. You know, should I stand? You know, you know, doing shepherd selfies, trying to figure it out. No, 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 no. They, they were doing their normal thing. Just a normal night, a normal routine, watching their flocks, and suddenly, there it is, stress. Suddenly. An angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. I said, well, that's wonderful. That's not stressful. Oh, yeah, it was stressful, even though it was wonderful, because look, they were terrified. And I don't know anybody that gets terrified without being stressed out. I mean, it just kind of comes with the territory. When you're terrified, you're stressed out. But the angel reassured them like this was going to help. Don't be afraid. Oh, silly me. <laughs> I'm sorry. You, you know why the angel told them to not be afraid? Because they were afraid. This was a stressful moment. They were freaking out a little bit or maybe a bunch of bit. I, I don't know. And if they had just picked everything up and ran. Nobody could have blamed him. Stress. The angel said, I bring you good news that will be great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. Now, at this point, their minds, you know how your minds go a million miles an hour, just race, 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 and you got all these thoughts just flooding in. You don't even know how to make sense of it. You're just like, what the, what the, I don't know, I don't know. I bet this was kind of what they were feeling. I mean, you let an angel come to you, and you know, one night you're just doing your job kind of thing and start telling you all this. And so I'm, I'm sure they're thinking, what are you, are you kidding me? What, the Messiah, the one that all of our ancestors have talked about and our grandparents have talked about and, and people have been, you know, looking for for hundreds, maybe even thousand years now. And he's here and we're going to be involved. Okay, we're part of the story. Are you kidding me? Because immediately the angel kind of I think and kind of felt this or, or, or knew this because look what the angel does next. Gives them proof, gives them a sign. And you will recognize him by this sign. In other words, guys, you don't believe me? <laughs> I know you're freaking out a little bit. Check this out. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Stress isn't over. Let's keep going. Suddenly, there it is again. The angel was joined with a vast host of others. Oh, great. Now there's lots of angels. It's just, what? The armies of heaven praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Yeah, they're talking about peace, but nobody was feeling peaceful at this point. This was not a ha ah moment. Okay? Mm -mm. The shepherds we're not looking at each other going, you know what, guys? This is so great. Let's just kind of kick back here and listen to these pretty angels sing. Mm -mm. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, now here's where it gets interesting, and, and, and this is what you and I need to really laser in on. Let's go. Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing has happened, which the Lord has told us about. That's key right there. That's huge. They simply followed instructions. They simply did what they were told. So stressed out. Mine must have been going a million miles an hour trying to figure out and process all this. They were able to kind of gather their wits about them and look at each other and said, the angel said, go, let's go. 
So they hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. In a stress-filled moment, when they had to be wondering, what's going on? What's going on? I, what do we do? What do we do? This doesn't happen. This is odd. This is weird. We're afraid. We're not quite sure what's going to happen next. They simply did what they were told. They chose to do what they knew was in front of them. They chose to simply go with what they knew. They didn't know why them. They didn't know why now. They didn't know where the angels came from. And I'm sure they didn't even fully hear all the details. They didn't fully understand peace on earth, you know, unto you is born. They didn't understand all of that. But they got the bottom line. Go to Bethlehem and look for this sign. And that's exactly what they did. When you and I get paralyzed by stress and we don't know what to do, and we're saying, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. And we tell our friends, I just don't know what to do. I think, and I want you to consider something. I think deep down, we kind of do. I think deep down, when we're saying, I don't know what to do, if we're really honest with ourselves, deep down, we have a hunch of what we need to do when we're saying, I don't know what to do, don't we? Well, I, I do, and I'm not a very smart man. I bet you do too. I think deep down we know something. At least of what we should do in the moment. Or what we could do. Or maybe even what we must do. I think in situations right now where you're saying and you're feeling, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I think you got a hunch. And maybe you just haven't mustered up the courage to do it. I look at the shepherds and with all that stress and all this stuff swirling around, they simply did what they knew to do. And so that's what I propose to you when you don't know what to do because you're so stressed out. Just do what you know. Just do what you know. When you don't know what to do, do what you know. It seems, it seems odd, doesn't it? But see, that's how you navigate very stressful situations. So let's, let's talk about this. Because this is so needed for me and so needed for you because we freeze, right? We freeze and we do nothing. And we, and we say, I don't know what to do. And all this indecision and we get stuck there. And we just... Here's what you and I do. Often we do absolutely nothing just because we don't know everything. We do nothing when we don't know everything. We have a decision to make, and we don't know how it's going to turn out, and we don't know what's going to happen next, and we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So we freeze. We do absolutely nothing because we don't know everything. And we say things like, well, I just don't know how this is going to work out. I don't know how this is going to come about. I just don't know how God is going to dot, 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 dot. Well, I just don't know how this is going to be okay. I don't know how. I don't know how. I don't know how. Listen, you can't let the how keep you from what you need to do now. Don't ever let the how keep you from responding to what you need to do now. Don't do nothing just because you don't know everything. Or another way to say it is, don't let what you don't know keep you from responding to what you do know. Man, that's so easy to say. It just kind of rolls right off the tongue. But man, it is so hard to live out. The truth is, is that you and I know enough of what we should do, could do, or even must do to take a next step. I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. And we say that to people hoping they will tell us what to do, right? And then we can just kind of say, okay, I'll do that. And then blame them if it doesn't go well. You know, that's the way you do it. But if you were to be really, really gut level honest with yourself, I bet you know more then you are comfortable admitting you know. When you don't know what to do, do what you know. You don't have to know the whole story to read the next chapter, do you? No. 
That's why you read the next chapter. You don't have to know how the journey's going to end in order to take a next step, do you? No. And see, we want to know everything. We want to know everything. Here's what I'm learning. Here's what I've seen in my life. I've seen and I'm learning that God often brings clarity to the things that I don't know when I am being faithful to do what I do know. And let me say that again. Now just listen. God will bring clarity to the things you don't know as you are faithful with what's in front of you. With, with what you do know. I know you don't know that. I, don't, you, I know you don't know that. I know we don't know this, but we know this. God brings clarity when we respond to what we do know. For me, by the end of uh, Sundays, and, and I'm sure it'll happen again today, and I've been doing this long enough to kind of know the pattern. At the end of Sunday, I'm, I'm exhausted. Um, many different ways. Um, and, and I'm usually pretty quiet, too, because I've used up all my words. I'm not a real chatty guy to begin with. Um, and kind of borderline introvert, extrovert. Um, and, and, and so when I get really tired, I get quieter, more quiet, which was interesting, you know, having two daughters and living in a world of girls where there's lots of talking, lots <laughs> of talking. If I twitch, please just ignore that. Um, I get to the end of Sunday, and often what will happen is, is that the stress of the previous week, it's kind of built up, you know, and I've t- just all these decisions and still decisions that need to be made and, and conversations, just exhausting conversations and... And just the wear and tear of mental, emotional, more than anything, because unfortunately my job's not as physical as I wish it were. However, what I'm doing today to me is very physical. So by the end of today, on top of everything, I will be emotionally drained, physically drained, spiritually full but tired. And I'm already kind of looking to this next week. And if I can be honest, and I look at my schedule... It's, it's kind of the same thing I, I see often. There's, there's more decisions. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I don't know what to do about that. People need a, a, an answer on this. I don't know what to do about that. I just got this email. Somebody's upset about that. I don't know how I'm going to respond to that. I got this exhausting conversation coming up about this. And they don't like that. And they don't like, what? Oh, goodness. You know what? I, I'm just not going to go. I'm just not going to do it. I'm just, how about I stay here? How about I just stay home? How about, you see, I, I get that feeling. You ever, ever feel that about your job? I bet you do. I bet you do. I mean, it's not just pastors. I mean, it's not like pastors have the only tough job in the world. And I'm not complaining. It is what it is. Every job's tough if you really do a good job at it. And so maybe in your job, you're like, oh, I just don't want it. I just don't want it. I got this sales thing. I got this appointment thing. I've got this quota thing. I've got whatever. I've got to, if you're a teacher, I've got to meet with these parents again, right? Or this kid or whatever, whatever your job is. If, if you're in the medical field, I've got to deliver some bad news. I'm so tired of telling people they have cancer. Whatever. Tough job. You know what I have found? is that if I will just get up on Monday morning and go do the first thing that I do every Monday morning, it gets me moving in the right direction. So at 7.15 tomorrow morning, because tomorrow's a Monday, I will meet with a group of men like I do every Monday morning, and we will pray together. And we will pray for this church and you guys and this community and our nation and each other and our families. And we will do this every Monday morning, almost without exception. I mean, you know, a foot of snow changes things and holidays, stuff like that. But other than that, I mean, it, it's, we're, we do this. This is what we do. And by the end of that, by 745, and by the way, guys, you can join us. Men, if you want to meet us here, here in the back there at the, in the office area. 7.15 to 7.45. By the end of that, okay, I got a little bit more. I think I can do this in me. I think I can do this this week. 
I think I can do this. And then by the end of Tuesday, and I've had all my weekly meetings, I'm ready to quit again. <laughs> no, 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 no. And you know what I found? I found if I would just do on Wednesday what I do every Wednesday. And I'm a creature of habit, so to me, this is kind of like, you know, I, I do live a boring life. Every Wednesday is my study day. It's my writing day. It's my study and writing day. And, and I study and write little bits throughout the week, but it's when I bring everything together, everything together. And I'm working weeks ahead, but I bring everything together on a Wednesday. And, and I block, try to block everything out as I possibly can. And you know what I found? At the end of Tuesday, and I'm ready to quit, if I don't just get up on Wednesday and I'll study and write and study and write and study and write and prepare by the end of Wednesday, I think I, think I can do this. I think, I think I got Thursday in me. I think I, got, I think I got it. Do you see what I'm saying? And that's just me, okay? I get it. And those are just examples for me, and that's not you. But I know this is true. When you don't know what to do, do what you know. Put one foot in front of the other and keep moving ahead. In the most stressful moments, when you're just frozen, solid, I don't know what to do. I bet you do. You may not know everything, but it doesn't mean you don't know something. When you don't know what to do, do what you know. If, even if you're not a follower of Jesus, this will work for you, right? Even, even if you're not, you know, I don't believe in the Bible and I don't believe in Jesus and all that kind of stuff. Okay, fine, fine. Use common sense. Use just common wisdom or go with the facts, right? I mean, you could say the shepherds just kind of went with the facts. The angel said, go do this, let's go do this. And they went with the facts. But if you're a follower of Jesus, you have more than just the facts. You have more than just common sense. You have the principles and truths of God's word. You fall back on that time and time and time again. I don't know what to do. Let's say you don't know what to do and it's a money thing. I don't know what to do. I don't know how I'm going to pay this bill. I don't know what to do. I don't know whether to buy that or to buy this. I don't know whether to sell or to wait. I don't know whether to, to buy or to wait. I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. When you don't know what to do with money, do you know what you, you, you know what? You, you do know something. So when you don't know what to do, do what you know. Here's what you know. Here's what you know. The next financial decision I have to make, I'm going to make the wisest one I can. You make the next wise financial decision. You say, well, that's the one I don't know about. Right? I didn't say it was easy. Do what you know. Spend less than you make. That's a principle. Do what you know. Follow the budget. What's a budget? Get a budget. <laughs> right? Trust the Lord. Honor him. Keep honoring him even when it doesn't make sense to honor him. That's what you know deep down, you see? When you don't know what to do relationship-wise, I don't know what to do in my marriage. I don't know what I'm going to do with my husband. I don't know what I'm going to do with my wife. I don't know what you're going to do with these kids that you gave me, Jesus. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I bet you know more than you think. So do what you know. Here's what you know. Do the most loving thing next. Maybe you don't have all the answers. Maybe you don't know whether to tell your teenager yes or no with that thing they want to do. Maybe, maybe, maybe you don't know how to solve this marital issue. Maybe you don't know what you're going to do in, in, in the big picture. But the next interaction you have with this person, make it the most loving response possible. You know, you know to listen. You know that's always a good thing, right? You know to forgive. You know, that, you know that's just a blanket thing, especially if you're a follower of Jesus, just forgive. And, and you know to ask forgiveness, right? You've been a jerk. And I know it's hard to admit that, but you've been a jerk. So not like, well, I made some mistakes and I'm so, you know, things happen. And I didn't. No, 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 no. Just own it. I'm sorry. I was a jerk. You know that, right? You know that. We know this. And we go around saying, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Oh, yeah, do what you know. And it gets you moving in the right direction. Be kind. Be patient. Be compassionate. When you don't know what to do about your job or your career, I don't know what to do about my job. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Maybe you don't have a job and you're like, I don't know what to do. I don't have a job. Go to the next interview. Just go to the next interview. Keep going to the next interview. Keep setting up interviews. Keep doing what you know 
to do. Maybe you're in a bad job. I don't know what to do. I need a new job. I don't know what to do about my bad job situation. Here's what you know to do. Show up at your bad job that you don't like and do the best job you can at your bad job. Until you get a different job. You know that. You do what you know. When you don't know what to do, just do what you know. It's so simple, but it's so hard. Maybe you're in school. And you're like, I don't know what my major. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I should go back. You know, I don't know what I'm going to do. Just take the next exam. Study for the next exam. Take the next class. Maybe it's your health. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know whether to have this procedure or that procedure. I don't, I don't know whether to take this medicine or not or to go to this doctor or that. I don't know what to do. Well, do what you know. Here's what you know. The next thing you eat needs to be healthier than the last thing you ate. We know that, right? Doctor says I need to get healthy. Okay, you know that. And this is a hard time of year to hear that, though, ain't it? Like, yeah, I want to just do what you know. Do what you know. Do what you know. Maybe you've got a decision you need to make. In, in any area of life, you're like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what the best thing to do is. By the way, in the new year, we're going we're gonna to start the new year with a series on decision-making because God has so much to say. And that's what New Year's resolutions are anyway, right? Just decisions. I don't know what to do about this. Well, here's what you do know. You can get more information. Get more information on the decision that you're trying to make. Get more information. Ask more questions. Ask for some advice. You know that. You know that. Seek wise counsel. Hey, here's, here's one. Pray. I didn't think of that. Or, or maybe this. Go to sleep and rest. And get up the next day with a fresh mind and a fresh body. And do the next right thing. Take the next step. When you don't know what to do, do what you know. So I don't know what's going on in your world right now. I could tell you that there are some things in my world where I find myself saying to myself, self, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. So I am doing my best to end those things, and I want to challenge you in those things, whatever it is for you, and it's different for everybody, fall back to what you do know and do that. And God will bring clarity to what you don't know as you respond faithfully to what you do know. Man, the shepherds, they had no idea. They just laid out for us this incredible principle of encouragement and empowerment. But boy, they did. They just went with the facts. They just did what the angel said, even though they were so stressed. When you don't know what to do, do what you know. Let me pray for you that God will give you the courage and the clarity to start with what you know while you're trusting him for what you don't. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so aware of our inability to know the whole story, yet we want to. We don't know everything but we desire to. We, we want to know it all so we can control it all, and, and yet we know that that's not going to happen. And so instead of us freezing with indecision, may we fall back to what we do know. And you have put so much in us, we know more than we're comfortable admitting we do. I don't know all these people that are watching online and all these people that are gathered at our locations. There's too many. I don't know what I'm going to do moments. I can't even conceive of how many different scenarios there are, but you know every one of them very well, even more than the people who experience them. And so, Father, I'm asking you to give us courage and clarity. Help us to decide to respond to the next right thing and do that. 
Help us not to do nothing just because we don't have it all figured out. And I ask this for myself and every single person here, that you would help us to honor you with what we do know while we're trying to figure out what we don't. In Jesus' name, amen. I, I hope this short series on stress has been as helpful for you as it has been helpful and educational for me because, man, this, is, this stress stuff's not going away. So if you're like me, this is probably something you'll, you'll come back to from time to time. And my prayer is that we will all learn to respond wisely and uh, learn from Mary, Joseph, and the shepherds. Hey, listen, a couple things before I let you go. If you brought back your shoebox for Samaritan's Purse, and it was due last weekend, but a lot of things changed last weekend with the snow and everything. And uh, so we have an extension with Samaritan's Purse, and that's still, they're still going to make it to children all over the world. Kids are still going to enjoy it, but bring them out of your cards if you have them with you. Get them to the, uh, out there on the patio area, and uh, we'll get them to Samaritan's Purse this week. And if you forgot it, you can get it to us in the next couple hours or get it to us first thing in the morning at the office, and we'll take care of it. Uh, Christmas is a week and a half away, y'all. And our Christmas services are next weekend. So here's the deal. If you have not gone to christmasincurnersville.com to RSVP, you need to do that today. Because here's the truth. The 4 o'clock service on Saturday is filling up fast. The 9.30 and 11 a.m. services on Sunday are also filling up fast. The, the places we have the most room right now are 5.30 and 7 p.m. on Saturday. And I know for those of you that have kids, you're like, well, that's around Junior's, you know, dinner time. It's when he eats his nuggets. <laughs> okay. Why is that funny? <laughs> you know why it's funny, right? Because that's all he'll eat. Uh, anyway... Right, and I get it, but it's Christmas time and bedtimes, you kind of throw that out the window and dinner time and all that kind of stuff. And so if you like to go to Christmassy things at night, right? Because we're going to be doing all kinds of Christmas carols and the patio area will be all lit up with lights and it's going to be beautiful. Then 5.30 and 7 p.m., it's going to be dark. So that is your jam. So RSVP, 5.30 and 7, if you like that jam, I know the lingo. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't know why I say that. I'm so old. Anyway, if you have not RSVP'd, please, 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 please do that because we don't want to turn anybody away. We want everybody to get a seat, and that's a way you can do that. We're going to give you these little invite cards on your way out, a little business card size, um, and they're reminders for not only you to RSVP, but to give to your friends, family, neighbors, coworkers, and your enemies, anybody who needs Jesus. And you give these to them, and this one says um, you need a new tradition this Christmas, and it's got a, some kind of elf sitting on a, I think that's a shelf. I, yeah, you know what that is. If you know what that is, you need a new tradition. This, and we got some out there, I think, with fruitcake, right? Fruitcakes are awful. I mean, everybody needs a new tradition if you like fruitcake. And I know I just offended you because your grandma made the only good one in captivity. No, she doesn't. <laughs> They're nasty. I love your grandma, but those things are awful. I've never met a fruitcake, and people brought me many through the years. I have never met a fruitcake. Well, I've met some fruitcakes, but I've never... <laughs> Had a fruit. Okay, I will just stop now. We can give you some of these on your way out. Invite your friends. We'll see you for our Christmas services. Bye. <laughs>